Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. I'm Carla Elizondo. Inside Talk Show, it's an inside job. We're living from the inside out, not the outside in. Let's not be victims of circumstances. And I wonder. There we go. She shut it off. All right. We are diving in, continuing The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. We're on Chapter 2, titled, There is a Science of Getting Rich. There is a science of getting rich. It is an exact science like algebra, algebra, or arithmetic. There are certain laws which govern the process of acquiring riches. Once you learn and obey these laws, you will automatically become a member of that select group of people who live the secret, and you will get rich with mathematical certainty. There is but one great law, namely, energy is. All physical and mental science is based on this one great law and its seven subsidiary laws which operate in conjunction with each other. The law of vibration is the law that serves as the foundation for the law of attraction. Number one, the law of perpetual transmutation. Perpetual transmutation. Everything is moving from form into form, out of form, from form into form, out of form. Think of water, clouds, precipitation, Think of birth, death, life, the trees, the leaves changing, the seasons, everything is coming in and out of form. So number one, the law of perpetual transmutation. Number two, the law of relativity. It's all relative. Number three, the law of vibration, how we're vibing, our vibes, which is just a, think of an instrument, vibrations on a drum set, low or high, bass or symbols you know a high or low boom a vibration if you've ever been to a concert and you've been near a speaker boom boom those vibes the vibratory vibration of something if something shakes the vibration of it um and that and we have that within us depending on our moods or our feelings we can read someone's vibe we can know if it's low or high excited and light or low and dark so number three, the law of vibration. Number four, the law of polarity, up, down, in, out, hot, cold, sun, moon, day, night, the law of polarity. Number five, the law of rhythm, the rhythm of things, the seasons, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, the law of rhythm. Number six, the law of cause and effect. Hello, there is no effect without first a cause, cause and effect. Thought is cause results or effect. We usually try to change the effect. We have to change the cause if we want the effect to change. Number seven, the law of gender. Uh, the law of gender. And gestation. Everything has a way that it comes to fruition and a time, a gestation period. The planting of a seed. The best definition of natural law seems to be that it is the uniform and orderly method of the omnipotent God. So the best uniform definition of natural law, laws of nature, and as I have, and remember, my idea of the world, of life, of nature, of God, how I see God, how I was raised, how I was taught, what I think in my head, when I hear new information, if it challenges the, my old beliefs, we're always growing. And if you're struggling or you're finding yourself triggered, bothered, irritated, contentious, even in your own mind, you know how we argue with people in our minds, agree, disagree, mostly disagree. If we're bothered by something, a thought, an idea, usually that's stupid. What an idiot. How do they think that? We think we're always right. Because we always are in our mind. We're always right. The other person's never right. They're right and you're right. There is no right. It's all relative, like one of the laws. So bottom line, my idea of God is, is law. God is law. God is impersonal. And as much as we try and say that, you know, we're evolving and our consciousness is expanding, if we still hold on to old superstitious beliefs that God is a man or God looks like human beings or God is this um, anthropomorphized, that's the word, to put in human attributes to an energy that just is. Like, let's think of electricity. 
Is electricity a person? Is electricity a man or a woman? Is electricity a American or a Italian? Electricity just is. It doesn't care. If you put your finger in a socket, it's going to zap you. If you wire up electricity to a light bulb, big or small, it's going to work. Electricity is impersonal. Energy is impersonal. It just is. God just is the way I see it today. So God is law. I love that. Unlike any other form of animal life that has been created, we were given the power of choice or free will. And remember, free will's in here, not out here. We think free will. I can do whatever I want. Honey, you're already screwed if you're on this level. Free will is our free will to think. Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, he realized no matter what's going on, I have free will to choose what I'm going to get emotionally involved with. And by that, will determine this. So along with this power of free will came certain responsibilities. The capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequences of our choice. That's the one thing we say, you know, the gods, God, whatever, can't interfere with our free will. That's the problem. <laughs> we think we could do whatever we want and we're not going to get consequences. Have you ever done something? You're like, oh my God, God, please, I swear, if you just make this go away or you just, if I could turn back time, I swear, if you make this right, I'll never do it again. No matter how much you pray or beg, there is no turning back time. You have to suffer the consequences of your actions. There's no way around it. You can't turn back time. You can't take it back. You don't get a do-over. Your actions have consequences and no deity or God can change that. How the consequences unfold in a joyful, loving, or a nasty, dramatic way is our choice. So even if we did make a choice from our own free will that got us bad results, once those results are here and now, we can then choose again how it will, the next moment will unfold. There's no, you can always save yourself at any given moment. Just because you made one bad mistake doesn't mean you're screwed for life. You can change it, but it has to be in here. So the capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequences of our choice. The laws or rules which govern every individual and which we cover to some degree in this book are as exact as the laws which govern the material universe. You can act in accordance with these laws or you can disregard them, but you cannot in any other way alter them. Obey the law, follow the law. We had this discussion a few weeks ago about authority, people who suffer from addictions or keep getting into bad situations. We have a problem with authority or obeying something or someone greater than us. We do not want to feel enslaved. We don't want to feel controlled. We don't want, but that's an illusion. We are. We didn't birth ourselves. We didn't make ourselves. We're not blinking our eyes, digesting our food or breathing. It happens automatically from the energy that just is God, energy, whatever you want to call it. There's something greater than us. If you've ever stand stood in front of the ocean or a huge storm, you can feel so small. We got to put it into perspective. And it's a beautiful thing that something greater than us exists. But if we think we're the be all end all, ooh, that's a problem. That's when problems actually start happening in life. So you must follow the law, you must obey. The laws of nature, we have to obey the laws of gravity, right? We don't think we're going to be the exception to the rule. That's the problem. I definitely suffered when I was younger with, we think we're special. We think we're the exception to the rule. Not me. It's not going to happen to me. I can get away with that. Or when consequences come, we're like, oh, why me? Why did this happen? It's like, we are not the exception to the law. The law is impersonal. It works for everybody. What I've seen in people that I work with, including myself, is we get into trouble when we think we are above the law, entitled to different things. We were told that we were entitled to different things. And when that doesn't happen, reality check, a slice of humble pie. We're not special. We're not different. We're not an exception to the rule, but we are amazing. It doesn't take away. We all are, but we have to obey the laws. It will not bend for us. 
Okay, so at, um, you can act in accordance with these laws or you can disregard them, but you cannot in any other way alter them. The law forever operates and holds you to strict accountability, mm. and there is not the slightest allowance made for ignorance. As you have witnessed viewing the secret, the law of attraction will deliver to you what you do not want, what you do not want as quickly and as certainly as it will deliver what you do want. The ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way by law. Those who do things in the certain way, whether on purpose or accident, get rich. Those who do not do things in this certain way, no matter how hard they work or how able they are, remain poor. It is a natural law that like causes always produce like effects. Like attract like. We've heard that fallacy of like opposites attract and no, 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 they don't like attracts like all your friends around you are the same as you your family you guys believe probably the same way there are exceptions in that sense you might have grown to a different point of view or evolved or just learned more your, your awareness has expanded and then you know you can leave some people behind in that same awareness but you'll start attracting people who believe the way you believe like attracts like so it is natural law that like causes always produce like effects that the above statement is true is shown by the following facts. Getting rich is not a matter of environment. Getting rich is not a matter of environment. If it were, all the people in certain areas would become wealthy. The people of one city would all be rich while those other, all the other towns would all be poor. The inhabitants of one state would roll in wealth while those of an adjoining state would be in poverty. We frequently see rich and poor living in the same environment and often engaged in the same vocations. When two people are in the same locality and in the same business and one gets rich while the other remains poor, it shows that getting rich is not primarily a matter of environment. Some environments may be more favorable than others, but when two people in the same business are in this or in the same neighborhood and one gets rich while the other other fails, it indicates that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. And furthermore, the ability to do things in this certain way is not due solely to the possession of talent, because many people who have great talent remain poor, while others who have very little talent get rich. Ain't that the truth? If we study people who have gotten rich, we find that they're on average, they're an average lot in all respects. It is evident that they do not get rich because they possess unique talents and abilities. They get rich because they happen to do things in a certain way. Getting rich is not the result of saving or thrift. Many very penurious people are poor while free spenders often get rich. Nor is getting rich due to doing things which others fail to do. Two people in the same business often do almost exactly the same thing and one gets rich while the other remains poor or becomes bankrupt. What are you in harmonious vibration with? What are you in harmonious vibration with? What industry are you in? And if you are, are there people thriving? If there are, that means you can too. You have to change. What energy are you in harmonious vibration with? From all these things, we must come to the conclusion that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. You're wondering, what is that certain way, Wallace D. Waddles? If getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way, then any man or woman who can do things in that certain way can become rich. And if like causes always produce like effects, the whole matter can be brought within the domain of an exact science. The question arises whether this certain way may not be so difficult that only a few may follow it. As we have seen, this cannot be true so far as natural ability is concerned. Talented people get rich, blockheads get rich, intellectually brilliant people get rich and very stupid people get rich physically strong people get rich and weak sickly people get rich some degree of ability to think and understand is of course essential but insofar as natural ability is concerned any man or woman who has sense enough to read and understand these words can definitely get rich although we have seen that it is not a matter of environment location does count for something okay although we have seen that it is it does not matter the environment Location does count for something. One would not go to the heart of the Sahara and expect to do successful business. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with people 
and of being where there are people to deal with. But that is about as far as environment matters. If anybody else in your town can get rich, so can you. If anybody else in your state can get rich, so can you. Again, it is not a matter of choosing some particular business or profession. People get rich in every business and in every profession, while their next door neighbors in the same vocation remain in poverty. It is true that you will do best in a business that you like. And if you have certain talents which are well developed, you will do best in the business which calls for the exercise of those talents. If you're at a point right now where you're saying, I don't know my purpose, I don't know my purpose in life. I don't know what my career should be. I don't know if the career I'm going after is the right one for me. Struggling with knowing, am I on the right track? Am I going in the right direction? I'm gonna tell you right now and save you years of heartache. What do you want? What do you want? What are you interested in? What do you like to do? That's it. What are the desires of your heart? That's it. Go do that. Go study it. Go develop the talents, take the classes, get the instruments, get the tools needed, and go for it. Does that mean you can't work another job to pay the bills? No. Work the other job to pay the bills. But your whole focus will be on this until you learn how to make money in this, in the thing you like. You might have to work somewhere else. But don't let that be the thing that drags you down. I was reminded, I say this all the time, especially in the arts, actors, musicians, even like people who are studying medicine, law, entrepreneurs. We say, don't have a plan B. Don't have anything to fall back on. I agree in this sense. Don't have a dream B or don't have a goal B, but have all the plans you want. If one plan fails, get the next one. You can have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K to Z. A plan A through Z. Keep going. Just don't have a goal B. Don't have a dream B. If you have a dream for your life and things you really want, never change that. That's always the main one. But the way you get there, be flexible. Be flexible. So getting rich involves the, necessi the necessity of dealing with people and behaving and being where these people are to do business with. Okay. So again, it is not a matter of choosing some particular business or profession. People get rich in every single aspect. Okay. It is true that you will do best in a business that you like. That's where we left off. <clears throat> so find what you like, do it, and just exercise those talents until you start making money in it. Also, you will do best in a business which suits your locality. An ice cream parlor would do better in a warm climate than in Greenland. A salmon fishery would succeed better in the Northwest than in Florida where there are no salmon. But aside from these general limitations, getting rich is not dependent on your engaging in some particular business, but on your learning to do things in a certain way. If you are now in business and someone else is someone else in your locality is getting rich in that same business while well, you're not getting rich it is because you're not doing things in the same way that the other person is doing them the secret is being demonstrated here lack and abundance are in the same locality no one is prevented from getting rich by lack of capital true as you get capital its increase becomes easier and more rapid but no matter how poor you may be if you begin to do things in a certain way, you will begin to have capital. The getting of capital is a part of the process of getting rich. It is a part of the result, which invariably follows the doing of things in a certain way. You may be the poorest person on the continent and be deeply in debt, but if you begin to do things in a certain way, you must infallibly begin to get rich because like causes must produce like effects. You will get rich even if you do not have any friends, influence, or other resources. If you have no capital, you can get capital. If you are in the wrong business, you can get into the right business. If you are in the wrong location, you can go in the right location. You can do so by beginning in the present business and in your present location to do things in a certain way which causes success. 
You must begin to live in harmony with the laws that govern the universe. You must begin to live in harmony with the laws that govern the universe or just obey, obey the laws, learn the laws and obey them. Clearly remember that the law of attraction is always working. It never rests. Think it, feel it, do it, and you will attract it. This is the great secret of life. Wow. It's just always everything I read, no matter if it's a psychology book, a personal development book, a spiritual book, it all goes back to those three things like the cognitive behavioral therapy model, which got they got from this stuff. Think it, feel it, do it, act on it. That's the same with our mind figure here. Think it, feel it, do it, take action. If you don't like what's going on down here, you got it. This is the source. You got to go to the root of the problem. You know, you have to think in a certain way to get certain results. This is what Wallace Waddles was saying. If you are, say, say you're an actor, you're an actor, and you see somebody that you admire their career, what are they doing? Do what they do. <laughs> do they spend a certain amount of time a day? Or how did they get to where they were at? Did they dedicate a certain time every day to studying, to memorizing, to producing their own content? Did they go to bed early? Did they go to bed late? Did they wake up early? Did they eat a certain way? Did they abstain from certain things? What does it take? Will Smith, The Rock, talks. they talk about this a lot. Yeah, I just really have learned that discipline brings freedom. And it's what I fought my whole life. I don't want to nine to five. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Well, what the hell was I doing? A whole lot of nothing. I have to be disciplined. And then that gets me everything I want. We must be disciplined. What do you want? Figure out what you want. Uh, something Heinz, the Heinz guy, the silver guy said, you know, find out what you want. And then figure out what you're willing to give up in order to get it. And then just go after it. And right away we think, well, what do I have to give up? Aww. Not anything you like, give up the things, those non-productive activities. Maybe you're going to give up the two hours you spend watching TV or your favorite series every night. Maybe you're going to give up going out to eat a few times a week. Maybe you're going to give up um, gossiping, whatever it is. It can be very small. What are you going to give up? Non-productive activities, scrolling on social media. What are you going to give up? Focus on what you want. Time is a ticking. We have a few, a couple months left, like a month, a couple months and a half left. Um, this stuff is so powerful. If you want to get into a program, please contact me. I, this is the way to live. This is the way things happen. You are on a program. Is your program working? Are you getting the results you want? If not, please schedule a free call with me. I would love to meet you and chat with you and tell you everything um, or answer, just answer any questions you have. So I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far. I'll see you tomorrow.